do. Oh, I am going to be unpacking the diagnostic criteria for autism today. And I was reading through it again to familiarize myself with it because it's been a while since I've read it. I forgot how icky and medicalized it is. It is real, ew. I, I, rem I knew it was gross, but we're gonna get into it and just why I think it's gross and why I think it's problematic because <clears throat> as I dive into this, you're gonna very quickly realize why no one would want to see themselves this way, the way this is written out. And so, you know, if autistic people stumble across this that don't know they're autistic yet, or they're wondering, could I be autistic? And then they read this, the way it's written, they're either not going to understand it or be like, no, 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 that's not me. Or I don't do that. It's just, it's just written horribly. So we're going to dive in and I'm going to talk about why. So here we go. And I'm going to be reading this off the screen because I don't have this memorized and it's I don't want to have this wasting space in my head. Um, <clears throat> so the diagnostic criteria for autism spectrum disorder. Okay, so persistent deficits in social communication and social, social interaction across multiple contexts as manifested by the following. Currently, or by history, examples are illustrative not exhaustive. See text. Oh my gosh. This is from the CDC website. Uh, Center for Disease Control also like disease control. <laughs> Ouch. Ouch. Okay. Moving forward. Deficits in social emotional reciprocity ranging, for example, from abnormal social approach and failure of normal back and forth conversation to reduced of sharing of interests, emotions, or affect, failure to initiate or respond to social interactions. So I'm gonna stop there at that first point and cause just that's already a lot of ugly junk. Did like anybody actually hear anything I was saying? Did any of that like sink in? Because it was just so boring that I was just trying to pay attention while I read it, but it's so horrible. Um, <clears throat> So there, there is the, they say, you know, deficits in social communication and so, social interaction. Um, in, you know, they say emotional reciprocity ranging, oh my God, there's dog jingles. <laughs> um, so abnormal social approach. Why has that got to be a bad thing? Okay. It's only abnormal because autistic people are a minority. So, you know, say we were the majority and neurotypicals were the, the minority, their social approach would then be abnormal because they were the, the, the minority. Like, I don't know. I just, it's just icky the way that's worded. Um, and so, or affect. So, you know, the face or the, the expressions may not be what someone would normally expect for like facial expressions or uh, emotional responses, things like that. Normal back and forth of conversation. Okay. I, I will, for me, this, this is, um, struggling with timing in conversation. Like when it's actually my turn to talk, when I should stop talking, when I'm rambling too much about something, I'm really into, usually when I'm really, really excited or happy, uh, which is great. Why well, I get to do videos by myself because I can just, I don't have to worry about that. It makes it really easy. <laughs> so that's great. Um, <clears throat> failure to initiate or respond to social interactions. You see this a lot in my baby videos um, when I was little. And then now it's like, I just am not really interested in going up. And there's I mean, the other thing that changed because when I was a young kid, I would go talk to strangers all the time, which, no sense of danger. I could have totally got abducted. That was a bad idea. And it didn't matter if they were interested in hearing what I had to say either, honestly. I would just go up and start talking to people. Word vomit! <laughs> uh, but now, you know, I know, I just, it doesn't, I'm like, mm, no thanks. It's just, no thanks, no thanks, I'm good. I, I've got, you know, some really great people in my life, and I'm not looking to, you know, try 
desperately to suck more people into my bubble because I feel like even my friends now feel like they want more attention from me. And so I have a hard time even keeping up with the friends I have now. I don't need more friends to disappoint. That sounds horrible, but like, I just, I'm not a very social person. And so my social quota is filled like really, really fast and, and I'm content. And I, you know, live with Dave and we hang out together all the time. And I also have a job and, um, uh, and social media, and I don't really crave a lot more social interaction. I just kind of feel like I've got a lot of social things going on, more than I need even. So I'm good. I'm just good, you know? And I don't think that's necessarily pathological. Um, that's just my perspective on that, putting this into some human language. Um, I have normal social approach. I mean, that, that could be a lot of things, and I, I don't... You know, why they got a label of that normal? How rude. <laughs> um, here's, here's the next part. We go, deficits in nonverbal communication, behaviors used for social interaction, raging, ranging, raging, raging, <laughs> ranging, for example, from poorly interchanged verbal and nonverbal communication. So, like, your body signals, like, your body language. There you go. Body language posture and things like that, you know, like, I, I like to sit, stand with my arms like this, and it gives me, like, I guess, a, a you know, a look, like, I'm, it's, uh, supposedly to the rest of the world, when you stand like that, it's, like, back off, stay away from me, so I'm, like, closed off, but really, I'm not, it's just comfy, like, I, I'm squeezing my arms and squeezing myself, actually, too, so maybe technically that's a stem. Um, but that's just how I stand. You can come talk to me when I'm standing like this. I'm so friendly, I promise. And my face, like, if I'm thinking, my face is just, like, flat and really serious, and I'm just thinking. And I'm sure I look like, Dan can hear me. I'm a mean person. Because I've had people tell me that. Like, I had someone tell me that the first time they saw me, they just thought I was a bitch just by looking at me. And I'm just like... Glad you know I'm not now. I don't really know how to respond to that. Uh, so, yeah, I, I don't know if that's that, that that's why that's my perspective, my experience with this. Abnormalities in eye contact and body language, or deficits in understanding the use of gestures. I think I don't have an issue with that. Really, the use of gestures. I think I am okay there. But I think a lot of that, like, it's movies and TV has helped, like, um, total lack of facial expression and nonverbal communication. That can happen, I guess. I have, I think my face is overly, like, cartoony. And maybe that's because I watch so many, like, anime cartoons. Like, I was really obsessed with, like, drawing anime faces and their facial expressions. And I think... I think that has something to do with my face. I don't even know how to explain it. Um, so then we go on to point three. Deficits in developing, maintaining, and understanding relationships ranging, for example, from difficulties adjusting behavior to suit various social contexts to difficulties in sharing imaginative play or making friends to absence of interest in peers. I think me, me, that as a child, and I guess, yeah, that, that, that last part, absence of interest in peers, I can see that in myself, uh, but I don't think that's a bad thing, it's just, I'm more into, like, my books, and my learning, and my hobbies, and my passions, and my skills, and making myself a better person than I am into going out and doing happy hours and socializing all the time and just doing other things. Like, I have good friends, and when there's something to celebrate, we'll get together and we'll celebrate and we will hang out, or, you know, we will hang out and do something low-key and, like, people come over and we have a good time. But I, I, I don't think that's wrong. I am very happy when let to just kind of do my thing. Uh, you know, I don't think 
Yeah, I just, I just don't think we need to pathologize this. Um, difficulty adjusting behaviors to suit various social contexts. You know, if I have to adjust just my natural behavior to fit into a social context, I'm not interested in that social context. Like, I don't really want to go somewhere where I can't feel relaxed to be myself and I have to be just on all the time, like work happy hours and things like that. No, thank you. No, thank you. Yeah, I do have difficulty in those situations, but I also really don't enjoy those situations. So, so what? <laughs> um, sharing imaginative play and making friends. I had friends growing up, because imaginative play, that talks more about kids. Uh, but they, I will admit, they were like, neighbor kids that lived next door, parents were friends, parents had kids, parents' friends had kids, or things like that. I didn't make friends in school and places like that until I was much older. So that's how that was for me. And then, you know, they have the support levels underneath. Um, and so restricted, restricted repetitive patterns of behavior interests or activities as manifested by at least two of the following, currently or historically. Uh, stereotyped and repetitive motor movements of objects or speech, simple motor stereotypes, lighting up toys or flipping objects, echolalia, idiosyncratic phrases. Isn't that horrible the way that's worded? It just sounds so weird. Um, so, behavior, interests, uh, interests, like, it's that super focus, like, we really love something, so we're, like, really into it, and it's all we're going to think about, and that makes us experts at things, so don't let anybody tell you that's bad. Um, repetitive patterns of behavior, uh, see this thing right here? That's, that's this right here, that's, um, echolalia, an idiosyncratic, Fulfilling idiosyncratic phrases. My words just went thick. Um, and then speech. Uh, th that's all that stuff. That's all stimming and then just being really, really into one interest. Stimming is, you know, like maybe rocking or rubbing your hands or it can be like this stuff when you get really, really hooky. Yes. You know, even this. Um, snapping. You know, that's, I mean, for me, it's all kind of. Yeah, just naturally into my motions. Like, I talk with my hands. Like, people notice, like, if you talk to me in person, like, I, when we're talking and having a conversation, my hands are like, Wah! just telling a story. And I really should have learned sign language growing up because then my hands would have had something to do. Although it might be strange if you, I just walked around doing that when there was nobody who needed me to sign was around. But I don't know, I'm just saying. I, my hands, they help me talk. They talk with my mouth. They go. It's us. It's a process. Um, so there's that. Uh, and echolalia is, you know, you hear, like, poor Dave. He says something, and I like the way it sounds, and so I'll repeat it back, back, back. And I'll say it a few times. Like, I don't know, he'll say something in a funny way, and I'll say it and repeat it like three times poor guy thinks I'm like making fun of him it's like no it's just some it's really enjoyable it's a good I don't know and it's I, they put it down here like it's this bad thing and it's something that makes me really happy so it's it's an, an idiosyncratic phrases yeah I talk to myself a lot and I say weird things sometimes and little funny voices and a lot of it's little clips from movies uh, or like songs or commercials or YouTube videos and I will just like quote them out, you know, like, oh, like Gizmo from Gremlins. Bye bye. Ow. I know. Fight night. Fight night. You know, I don't know. You know, like, I, he's cute. I don't know. And that's really bad. I'm not even good at it. Like Elmo. I, oh, Elmo. Sometimes like, I'm like, Elmo. Elmo wants to eliminate. And it was like from this YouTube video and I'll just say that. It's funny. And I don't know. I remember it. I hear it in my head exactly the way it was. And I can replay it over and over again every time I say it. And that's, I don't know. And that's like how I, same thing happens when I sing a song. It's replaying in my head. 
Um, insistence on sameness and the flexible adherence to routines or ritualized patterns of verbal, nonverbal behavior. Extreme distress at small changes, difficulty with transitions, rigid thinking patterns. Greeting rituals need to take same route or eat same food every day. I do like to take the same route, although I've pushed myself to change it every now and then. It just doesn't feel right when I drive. Um, and I kind of like to have the same morning routine, but I don't think that's a bad thing either. My Morning routine being the same every day helps me keep track of my routine to make sure I don't forget something because if I'm going through my morning routine and something completely abnormal happens in it and it throws me off track, I'm liable to get to work without my lunch or forget to feed the dogs or forget to give them water or forget to lock the door. Just something bad will happen because my routine helps me stay organized. And I need that to just have less chaos in my world. So again, I do, not something we need to pathologize. And okay, yes, eating the same food every day is probably really bad for your nutrition. Uh, and I do that. I try not to do that. And I will consciously add in like really healthy smoothies to get nutrition into me because also, I have a habit of just forgetting to eat because I'm, and I just, everything I eat, I try to make sure it's very nutritious just because I really know that I need to take care of my nutrition, especially if I go on a thing where all I'm going to eat for a week is one thing every day, every meal, uh, you know, it's going to happen sometimes and I, I, that's okay. You know, I just try to make sure I get a good nutrition anyway. Um, da -na -da -na 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 highly restricted fixed interests that are abnormal in intensity or focus, strong attachment or preoccupation with unusual objects, excessively circumscribed or pers preserve. I can't see that word and it's moving. Interests, anyway, they're just saying we're too into the things we're into and we're like really obsessed with our interests. And my perspective on that is if we didn't have people who were so interested in things that they became like true artist, expert level, expert geniuses in it, like in a specific field, then there would be no, like it's just important. Like those people have passion, passion. They love something so much that they are just going to know everything about it. And they're not satisfied until they know everything about it and they understand it fully. That's how it is with me, and I don't think that's terrible. I think that's one of the best parts of me is when I get interested in something, I am so hooked that I have to, I must have all the information. I need it in my head, and I can't stop thinking about it, and it it's made me very skilled at very many random things and I you know and it's been circus arts and fire dancing and hula hoop dancing and drawing anime and um, making websites and YouTube videos and doing art and you know all of these things that I've done making t-shirts and it's it's just because I love doing these things I have the, and I get I just really I love all of it and I don't think that's bad. I don't. But, you know, it's here, written in a way that makes it sound horrible. Um, and, you know, then it just goes on, and it just gets worse. And this video is going to be an hour long if I do the rest of it now. So maybe I will talk about the second piece, which is the support levels, um, next. But not, not today. Uh, and if you want me to do that or more do more commentaries like this, this is my first time doing this, do, give me a thumbs up, let me know. Uh, if you think this video could be helpful to anyone, please share it because I try. <laughs> and if it's not good, don't share it because then it's crap and then nobody needs to see it. So hopefully it's not crap. Uh, I will talk to you all next week and uh, let me know your thoughts. Alrighty guys, bye.